Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight, tomorrow, last week, next week, sometime in the past, person, or future? Hope you're all having a good time. And as always, I have Greg, the Badger Piper, with me. Greg, how are you doing next week? I foresee myself uh, hopefully uh, recording this podcast episode, uh, but uh, not this week's episode, uh, next week's episode. Do you have any predictions on what episode we're making next week? Uh, it may not be Avatar because uh, my wife and I will, are going to be out of town until uh, next Wednesday uh, mm. weekend. So uh, may just have to be a, uh, a topic discussion. That's what I foresee. Well, it's good to know that you'll be sitting there where you're at now next week, even though you'll be gone for the rest of the week. Yes. Well, really, I mean... I guess it all depends on uh, when we get back, because that'll, uh, uh, I think I'll know better uh, next week what what will happen, but uh, by then, you know, maybe my prediction will be wrong, and, uh, but hey, you know, <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a fortune teller, so what can you say? Yeah, well, you know, you can't really, uh, you can't really trust those people anyway, I mean, come on. It's all, it's all, it's all pseudoscience. All pseudoscience. There's nothing scientific about it. I mean, science can tell you how it rains. True. What are you smoking yeah. tonight? Yeah, um, I'm smoking some uh, uh, Stockaby's uh, luxury navy flake in this uh, Ben Wade uh, strange pipe that I have, uh, the strange shape that I have. It's kind of, well, it's kind of like a, I would say it's kind of like a big Dublin, uh, but uh, it's uh, kind of uh, got panels, but uh, I, I haven't exactly counted how many uh, panels there are on here. Definitely more than eight. Ooh, that's uh, a lot of panels. A lot, a lot of panels. Yes. How about you? What are you smoking tonight? Well, I'll tell you the tobacco, and then I'll let you guess the pipe. I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll guess the pipe. I am smoking um, some Double Down. It's a burly blend from... Uh, I can't pronounce the name. It's, it's one of the bulk blends that you can get on smokingpipes.com in, in their cheap mm-hmm. blends, you know, like 15 bucks for a pound or something like that. What pipe am I smoking? Ah, uh, yes, it's the um, Stanwall uh, Royal Guard. Yeah, it is. I just finished this up like half an hour ago. Nice. Glad to see it. It's looking nice. Yeah, it doesn't take. It didn't take much. I uh, just had to ream it out quite a bit. There was a lot in this sucker, but it came out nice and easy, so that was good. Good. I mean, I mean. I, I mean as you know, the outside, there was like the, the the exterior of the stumble, there was really nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Just a little uh, water, kind of like droplet uh, stains. But yeah. I figured a good polishing would, got, would get them out. And it did. The stem was a little tough, getting those out. I had to go a little bit further than I wanted to on, uh, on the stem, but it's almost black. But you can see there's still a little bit of the if I get it just the right way, I was managed to leave some of the age to it. Yeah. But uh, I really had to go down to get uh, to get that staining off. I, I don't don't know what exactly they did, what they dropped on it, but it was tough to come off once it got into that oxida- oxidation. Yeah. I'm glad that, uh, you know, it's uh, getting use. And uh, I helped to... Uh, even though it's more of like a second rather than like a standard one. Yeah, this, is a, this is a Royal Guard, you said. Yeah, that's what it says yeah. on it, too. But it's uh, Still. made by Stanwell. Yeah. First impressions is it's a good little pipe. Yeah, all their pipes, you know, even their like Canadian kind of shapes, uh, all kind of veer towards the shorter side of, uh, of everything. Yeah. So. I imagine a, for them a, a church. Well, no, they do have Stanwell Church. <laughs> yes, Stanwell does like have a, Church Warden. 
but but given like their other pipes, uh, if uh, if they didn't make like actual church warrants, it would probably be along the lines of uh, maybe being six and a half inches or something uh, length for the whole pipe. Yeah, for sure. Wow, you're coming through quite clear tonight. I just thought I'd let you know. Um, like you're you're hitting the marks. Like I mean, a couple of the episodes I've had to do some playing with the frequencies, but I think the editing on this one will be a lot easier. Oh, good. I don't know what you did different on your setting up your mic tonight, but she's right on the money tonight. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm learning. Well, shall we get into the episode that we predict yes. is going to be the main topic of conversation for at least this week? Yes. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, what well, I didn't get a chance to look at the title. You know what? Neither did I. I was sitting on my phone because it was in my pocket when I went to cast it to the TV and I had my wife do it from her phone. So I don't even know what the episode name was. And I only watched it two hours ago. But it probably has something to do with, uh, um, you know, predicting Fortune. stuff. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I thought maybe the background music had stopped. It's just coming in low. So, everybody, if you hear Netflix go off in the background while I'm looking this up. Oh, wait. No, I don't have to do that. I'll go to the IMBD. That'll do it. DB. Whatever. Then I don't have to worry about the stupid trailers on Netflix turning off. That is the worst. I... If there was anything I wish I could do to to Netflix, it would be to turn the automatic playing of their trailers. It is so obnoxious and it makes it, uh, I don't, it makes me not want to use their app, um, which I already don't care for them because of stuff that happened last year with like the whole cuties debacle and, uh, and other things. But, uh, yeah, like I just, it is a pain to go through and try to find something to watch because of the automatic play. That doesn't really happen to me on the uh, on the app when I'm using it on the phone or the tablet or something, but if I'm in the browser, it certainly does. Well, I mean, you know, like you, you get a couple seconds where it does nothing, and so I've learned to just kind of speed read it. So uh, like at the most, I get like only a second or two of the trailer or uh, whatever they're deciding to show. But it is, it is the worst. Um, I'm so glad the other streaming services out there do not do the same thing. I mean, I'm glad that there's trailers on there and I would like, I would be fine with like a, a quick option to, you know, watch it, but uh, not the way that it's currently going. Yeah, okay. The episode title, was quite simply the fortune teller. That's not surprising. And here's the IMBD description of the episode. The gang visits a village where a fortune teller, hence the name of the episode, lives who is said to never be wrong and tries to show Katara how he feels about her. Now I remember why we stopped using these. Yeah wasn't a very good one although not the worst one that we've uh, no no we've had some one-liners out there that make no sense right it's nice to see they're, they're consistent though because we haven't used the IMB, imdb description since uh since the flash days and uh we had some really bad ones there i i think i remember us doing it with the mandalorian oh yeah we did it with them too and they were pretty bad, so they're, at least they're consistent across all shows. Yes. Although it is a challenge to uh, sum up a 30-minute episode in uh, two sentences, I guess. Um, I guess that's part of the challenge. I, that's what... Uh, when you pitch stories, you kind of have to... Uh, that's kind of how you pitch them, it's by two to three second, uh, three sentence, uh, kind of like ideas true but there were other things in this episode that could have been mentioned other than Aang tries to show Katara how he feels because 
he's going to be doing that for three bloody seasons. So, really, that did not need to be mentioned at all, because you can mention right. it in another episode where it's more prevalent. Yeah, like, it's comparable to, like, uh, Barry likes Iris, or Barry uh, pursues Iris. Also been been done for three seasons. Hey, that's it. Barry's not the Flash, he's the Avatar. There we go. That's why he can run fast. It has nothing to do with a speed force. He's an airbender. That's right. Well, yeah, kind of similar, uh, you know. I think they get along pretty well, power set-wise. Yeah, well. And being the Avatar, he can, can, he can shoot lightning, he can redirect flames you can blow things out i mean it, it, it it's all the flash power set to a t yes. he's just the avatar he just hasn't used his earth bending or uh water bending powers yet right maybe that's season eight who knows that would be interesting hmm i'm gonna propose that to the flash tv talk guys see what they say Uh, that you could learn like the uh, different uh, elemental uh, but well, I guess you know how there's like the speed force well I think in the comics they added stuff like the strength force the uh, mind force uh, and I think they did that in the show too that was that was the first half of season 7 uh, the sage force the strength force the still force And the one I can't remember. It's usually something like love. Well, no, they can't do that because that's Barry and Iris's thing. Right. Same. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, or are you looking it up? No, I'm just trying to remember it. Oh yeah. Apparently, it didn't make that big of a. Oh, that didn't make that big of an impression. Oh wait, it's because they didn't do a four, do the fourth one. It was, they were just using Sage still, um, Sage still. Oh, come on, strength. strength and speed. That's the ones they they didn't they in the comics they did four extra ones, but they didn't do the fourth one this time. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now that we've got that settled, maybe we should actually talk about Avatar instead of the Flash. Yes, yes. Um, and with this uh, this episode, um, I wouldn't say that like it's a you know it's a nice little kind of uh, break from the storyline where you have the main characters kind of going on this uh, tangent adventure. More, it's more of like a character episode than it is kind of like a advancing the overall plot kind of story and uh, you know like uh, obviously it doesn't have like the weight of uh, the previous two episodes but uh, like for itself like it, yeah like it kind of reminds me of some of the uh, episodes earlier this season yeah some of the one-off fun episodes that uh, they don't really do it much in the, like you said much in the way of plot advance but you know a little character development here and there yeah and uh and, and with it too like we we did get a, a really cool new uh, animal with the bear platypus ah uh, yes the platypus bear i don't know about you if i had something as big as oppa behind me roaring i'd lay an egg too mm-hmm yes which was uh, quite amusing oh it was and that, that that bear is basically how they found out about this whole fortune teller business because uh, the guy who was dodging the bear is the guy who uh, told him about um, Madam Wu or Lady Wu or whatever the hell, the hell she's called Aunt Wu there we go Aunt Wu yes. who is fortune teller of the village and said hey my trip's going to be fine 
But you were almost killed, says Sokka, and well, yeah, that's true, but I wasn't. So it was fine. Yeah. And you know, um, like the whole, like the, the main crux of the episode is, is kind of like, is Aunt, um, does Aunt Wu, uh, uh, can she really see the future? Or uh, is it all just kind of uh, like a sham? And then, you know, they purposely kind of go out of their way to uh, not answer that. But, uh, you know, because I mean, ultimately everything she does say it does come true. Yeah, it, but it's sometimes true. It, um, but it's like, uh, it, for some of them, it, it was a matter of uh, people having to do something to make sure that it uh, happens. Yeah, self fulfilling prophecies. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, okay, so Aunt Wu told you you're going to be wearing red shoes. Uh, how long have you been wearing those red shoes? Ever since I told her. Well, then, of course, it's going to come true. Because, you know, if you're wearing them every day since you were told. If you're wearing red shoes uh, on a certain day, you're, you're on the day you wear red shoes, you meet your true love. Okay, if you wear red shoes every day since you're told that, that's definitely going to come true. That has nothing to do with any ability. I definitely know some people in my life that would uh, wear those shoes after they would be told that. Me too. But, uh, you know, this episode, it, it kind of reminds me of some, like, there's been some other episodes that uh, have had this uh, kind of idea where it's uh, a matter of, like, fortune telling or superstition mm-hmm. uh, that uh, is dictating the lives of uh, the people. Uh, I remember there's a Orville episode where uh, it, it was really interesting, but uh, essentially uh, two of the members of the crew uh, get sent to kind of like, uh, they, they go to a planet that uh, has just kind of, uh, it, it, it's probably similar to like a, a Star Trek thing where, you know, your mission is, if you go to a planet that doesn't have space travel or, or any communication with the outside uh, universe, you, you know, don't, you know, the prime directive, I think, kind of. Uh, like, you don't, uh, you know, expose, you know, you give them that technology too soon or whatever. You have to let them discover it on their own. And they go to, so they go to this world that uh, has finally reached that point where, okay, they've sent contact out, we can contact them back and uh, let them know everything that's out there. Well, they get there, and even though there's, uh, you know, science and everything, uh, two of the crew members of the Orville get sent to this camp because it's discovered that they were born uh, during this uh, uh, that it was their birthday that day which meant that they were born under a specific uh, a bad kind of uh, astrological sign that meant that everyone that was born under that sign was uh, you know you're, they viewed that whatever your astrology sign is that you're born under dictates your life and with that one it's you you are basically kind of cursed um yep yep and uh, and so they had to kind of figure a clever way to kind of put an end to that kind of thing. and then there was a one of my favorite uh twilight zone episodes uh it's actually it as william shatner in it to, to continue the whole space theme but uh, it's not the um one that he's famous for which is the, where he's on the airplane with the grandma. Instead, this one, it's him, and uh, he plays a character where he and his wife go to this diner where there's this uh, fortune-telling machine, and uh, they're waiting for their car to get uh, uh, fixed. And so they're just spending time in this diner, and they decide to just kind of uh, ask this fortune-telling machine like questions. And they start, uh, and the way that it's always answers them it uh, is vague enough where it uh, seems like it can come true and it, it seems like it's foretelling like things that are going to happen to them and uh, again like it's not one of the more famous ones but it's one of my all time favorite ones uh, so like I got a lot of those kind of vibes from this episode 
And so even though like this Avatar episode wasn't necessarily unique in the sense of the story that it was telling, it still told it very well and uh, mm-hmm. made it made it entertaining. You know, sure, it, it's not uh, going to progress the plot forward, um, but overall, like you, you get some fun characters like uh, like Mink. Yeah. Uh, she's uh, you know just this fun kind of like stalker, uh, you know, love uh, and innocent love with uh, Aang, but uh, you know it, it creates this uh, kind of uh, fun little love triangle that's in the story. Yeah, and Love Triangle that only lasts for this episode, thank God, because I don't think I could have dealt with her any more than this one episode. I don't know. Yeah, she, she was yeah. kind of annoying, really. Oh, sure. Uh, I mean, I, I could see that. Like, she, I think, well, she's meant to be kind of annoying. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, I thought, uh, with the way that she was in this episode, I kind of expected her to be, like, more than a one-and-done kind of character. Yeah, really. It's almost like they were thinking about setting her up for uh, a comeback, but then it just didn't happen. Maybe there's just... By the time they thought about her again, maybe it was just too late on in the show's run. Well, I read that the person that did her um, voice is uh, plays Toph in the next season uh, for the rest of the series. So maybe they... And she comes from an earthbending village, so maybe uh, the character... They didn't want to use the character... But elements of the character, I got maybe like uh, stuck enough with them, uh, the creators, that they decided to uh, have Toph. Maybe, and, and, and if that's the case, and that's what uh, what this character Meg, um, Mang, or whatever uh, inspired, then good for her because that was a great inspiration. Because otherwise, who 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 knows who to tell Todd Ang airbending. I mean, not airbending, earthbending. Ah, long day. I hear ya. But yeah, overall, not a bad episode. And I mean, climbing the volcano to find a, to find a certain flower that grows on the rim and uh, discovering that, hey, uh-oh, this thing's about to blow. But doing that being the catalyst for the prediction from earlier in the episode coming true... Hey, that was kind of fun. Yeah. No, absolutely. And ultimately, showing that uh, Madame Wu, or Aunt Wu, having uh, some sort of predictive gift because, well, she did tell Katara that she'd marry a really powerful bender. And she did. The one she was traveling with at the time. Yes. Although it also, for for those uh, Zuko shippers out there, could fit him as well. It could have, but it didn't. But it could. No. <laughs> but anyway, it didn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> but um, you know what I like about this episode is, uh, you know, yeah, there was a lot of romance in the episode, but it's like overall, it was like a, a really funny episode. Like it. This is where they really got a chance to kind of let loose their um, comedic side. Like, especially, oh, yeah. like, uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed was all the, the poor, um, poor Sokka and all the misfortune that awaited him. Where he doesn't even, like, get his get to go in and get his fortune told. He's like, uh, 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 Aunt Wu is basically like... Uh, uh, misfortune will follow you and it'll be of your own making. And he proceeds to uh, essentially do that to everywhere he, he goes. Where if he acts out at all on anything, it will come back and hit him. Yep. Thus making her prediction true. Mm-hmm. Go figure. Right. And so I think it's one of those things where like, I feel like the moral episode is, um, uh, if anything, like it's kind of like, uh, you know, 
you know, don't get, uh, you know, too, uh, like, it, it doesn't seem like it fully condemns the whole um, mystical uh, side of everything. Uh, because, because uh, again, like, everything does come true, but it's kind of like the, um, like, definitely I got some obvious kind of uh, allegory type of, uh, or, or like similar vibes of like how you could probably put like religion in, in the same same type of thing and uh, there's that uh, you know that quote I'm not I think it might be Benjamin Franklin or somebody that says uh, you know God helps those that helps themselves and uh, you know I th- don't know if I necessarily like fully agree with that but uh, I mean definitely if you only rely on uh you know it, it's that whole like uh, you know you have uh you know paul saying like work with you know works without faith is dead you know is wrong and then james you know faith without works is dead so like it's just it's that yin and yang kind of like balance yep definitely and i mean too like when she did the whole fortune telling thing with ang I mean, what she foretold is what's basically going to happen in the finale of the series. Yeah, I thought that was the best part of the whole episode. You're going to be involved in this battle between good horses of good and evil, and it's going to be epic, and geez, I've never seen this happen before. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I already know all of this. <laughs> what about love? Right. <laughs> And that, was, and that was fun too. Him overhearing uh, the prediction for poor Katara, who I don't know. Like I, I kind of expected. If you had told me that this episode was coming up, the whole like uh, you know fortune teller, uh, like if you didn't mention the whole love thing, I think of the two characters, I think. I would have made, but maybe this is just the side where, like, the characters kind of remind me of, like, the um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, where Hermione is the really smart one, and uh, uh, Ron is kind of the more goofy, aloof one. Uh, where uh, I, I would have maybe assumed that Sokka would have been the one that would have been more, you know, taken in by the whole um, fortune telling kind of stuff, and Katara being science-minded. Yeah, well, even some of the smartest people in the world can be fooled by stuff like this. I mean... Oh, yeah. Everybody's got something they believe by faith, whether it makes sense or not. So... Yeah. I mean, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle believed in fairies. So... And yet he wrote a character that uh, was very much uh, would not have, uh, you know, done the same thing, which I I think is uh, kind of a very interesting thing about his life um, and an interesting story. But uh, and then you have uh, his friend, uh, Harry Houdini, who worked in like the illusions and everything, but was very much into uh, debunking and uh, Yep. Skepticism. Houdini debunked so many fortune tellers because he knew what they were doing. He used those techniques himself. Right. Which I th- always thought that I, I think somebody did take this idea and made it into a show, but I always thought that it would be cool to do kind of like a pre, like a, a Victorian or Edwardian style, like X Files type show with. Uh, uh, Conan Doyle and uh, Harry Houdini as partners, um, considering they were friends in real life. Yeah, that just, was done. You're right. I remember that show. It was a one season wonder. Um, I don't remember what it was called, but uh, it was Houdini and Doyle going around solving crimes. Basically, it was a neat show. I mean, I'm I was sorry that it only had one season to it. I would have watched season two, three, four, five, six, a million. I yeah, because it uh, it's a good. I mean, it's a good idea because I, I think you know these were two people that uh, had very 
interesting lines. And, you know, they're still talked about to this day. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I think it, it just would have been interesting to, you, know, you could have a lot of fun with that. Like I could see like the guy that did the um, Sherlock Holmes movies like, with Robert Downey Jr. I could see him doing like a really good kind of like uh, action style, kind of like strange mystery kind of uh, movie with the two of them. Although I wouldn't want him to play Holmes, I know I know the perfect two people for this, for these roles, and and I I cast cast Iron Man as Doyle, hmm. and then I'd make Benedict Cumberbatch play Sherlock Holmes because he already does it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, who would play Houdini? Oh wait, we're uh, yeah okay. Um, Iron Man would be Houdini and uh, okay. Doyle would be yeah. Cumberbatch since okay. he plays Sherlock Holmes. That's what I meant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I uh, I kind of thought that, w- that was it. Uh, I just, uh, for clarity. Yeah, because I screwed that up somewhere along the line. But yeah, I think that's how it would work out perfectly because, yes, uh, Downey Jr. has also played Sherlock Holmes, but I like Cumberbatch's Sherlock Holmes better. Ooh. Probably because he's actually English. True. I mean, I enjoyed those uh, Sherlock Holmes movies. Like, oh, yeah, they weren't like real. Like, uh, like obviously the the BBC show was better, uh, at least for the first three seasons. I, I was not a fan at all of the fourth season, but uh, I never really watched them all that much. You know, I've seen one or two here, or there, and those those that I have seen, I've enjoyed. Been the way Benedict Cumberbatch plays Sherlock Holmes, and uh, I, I just think he does it a lot better than than Downey Jr. did. Yeah, I'd agree with that. All right. So we've been all over the spectrum today. We've talked about The Flash. We've talked about Avatar. We've talked about Sherlock Holmes, Houdini, and Doyle. I think we've covered quite a bit of ground tonight. Yeah. And uh, like, I know we kind of jumped a, a lot away from the episode. And I think part of it is just the fact that it's not, you know, it is one of those kind of like one and done type of things. But, uh, you know, what? that's not to say anything really negative about this episode i I enjoyed it oh yeah absolutely it's good enjoyable fun episode that doesn't have a lot of meat in it it's a lot of fluff and you you need fluff every once in a while you know you can't be serious all the time so good episode but it also yeah and i I, I kind of feel too that it sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you there uh but i it was also an episode that i felt also kind of gave all three of their main characters equal treatment. Absolutely. Like, obviously, Aang is is still your main character and everything, but uh, I felt like the uh, other plots, like, I I don't feel like there's really, like, a... I I guess you could say Katara's thing is the B plot, and Sokka's stuff is the C plot, but it doesn't... I don't even know, really, if you could categorize that. Yeah, yeah. uh, you're, you're, not, just, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's not one of those episodes where we're sitting there going, Hang and Katara to th- do this. Sokka also in this episode. Right. Which unfortunately has happened to him a little bit. Which is a shame because I really like his character. Sokka's a great character. He's just what every pair of superheroes need. The everyday man who can keep up with them using his boomerang and his club. Yes. He's basically Hawkeye. Yeah. All right. Well, with all that being said, uh, unless you have any other predictions you'd like to make. No, uh, nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Then I predicted that we're going to uh, call the episode here. And if you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can always follow us via the links that are provided on for Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. It's all in the description. And uh, email, please, somebody, stop me from begging. It's becoming something of a running joke. What email is that again? Uh, it's the one that I always say. 
River Splash Time at Gmail.com. That's it. It was actually slipping my mind. I'm glad you pulled it out because I couldn't remember. <laughs> oh, it's just been one of those days. All right, everybody. With that, we'll wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Have a good week, everyone.